Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an interesting complex exponential logarithmic equation, whatever you want to call it, it has everything. We have x to the power ln x equals i, and we're going to be solving for x values. Obviously, we're going to be looking at all the solutions, real and complex. At this point, you might be thinking, like, are there any real solutions? We don't know, right? We're going to check. But do you think something like this can have real solutions? We have i on the right-hand side, but you never know, right? Negative 1 is a real number, but the square root of negative 1 is not a real number, which is i or negative i. A lot of times people say, oh, I can replace negative 1 with i, but guess what? You can also replace it with negative i because they are equally correct. Anyways, that's a different story. Let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. By the way, I made a similar video on my other channel, A plus BI, which specifically deals with complex numbers. If you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check it out. We look at a different scenario. This is going to be similar, but we're going to do something different. Anyways, let's get started. I'm excited. We have x to the power ln x equals i. So I'm going to write x to the power ln x as e to the power ln x to the power ln x. Obviously, if you have something like t, you can write it as e to the power ln t. And I think this is true for complex numbers as well, right? Now, let's go ahead and set it equal to i. But instead of i, let's use a complexified, well, wait a minute, isn't i already complex? Well, I'm, what I mean is, let's use Euler's formula in the most complex form. And that is e to the power pi over 2. Remember that pi over 2 comes from here. If you graph or plot i, it's going to appear on the imaginary axis, the positive part, the top part, and it's going to be one unit away from 0, which means we can write it as r e to the theta, where r is 1 and theta is pi over 2. Makes sense? That's why we can write this as pi over 2 times i. But before we multiply by i, we can actually put the i here and just add a multiple of 2 pi to this, which is 2 pi n. Why? Because of the several branches of the complex stuff. You know, these, this is kind of like a periodic, this has periodic values, and they just go up by multiples of 2 pi, or just go up by 2 pi. Make sense? Anytime you add 2 pi, you get a different solution. So there are infinitely many solutions. Wait a minute, does this equation have infinite many solutions? We still have to check. Let's go ahead and check it out. So now, we have the basis, e, so that's good. We can go ahead and focus on the exponents, ln x to the power ln x equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, hopefully you knew that, n is an integer, okay? It can't be a fraction. It can't be one half. Okay, now let's go ahead and use the rules of exponents. Move this down. You're going to get ln x times ln x, which is ln x squared equals i times this. Wow, how nice. We have something squared equals i times something. How nice is that, right? Well, we're going to keep it simple first because obviously you can ju just go off of this simple solution. Sometimes it's better to look at a simpler version because you don't want to get bogged down or overwhelmed. So let's keep it simple and replace n with 0. That's going to give us ln x squared equals i times pi over 2. How simple is that, right? Now, we're going to square root both sides, but before that, let's go ahead and do something fun. By the way, I want to write it as pi over 2i. I, I, I hope you don't mind, because um, I just want to keep it as a multiple of i. So it's kind of like bi. That's where the a plus bi comes in, right? But that's another channel. And you'll see a really nice problem on that channel as well. Anyways, commercial break over. Let's continue. So how do you square root both sides? I need to square root i. But guess what? If you use Euler's formula again, it's easier. So how do you do that? Pi was written as, remember that, e to the power i times pi over 2. This time, use a different integer, 2 pi k. Yes, k is also an integer. Now we're going to focus on this. ln x squared is equal to that. You see? Of course, we're going to square it both sides, but let's go ahead and write it first. ln x squared is pi over 2 times e to the power i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi k. Sometimes people say, like, are you thinking about these expressions all the time? Yes, a lot of times I'm thinking about these expressions when I'm eating. When I take a break, math is kind of something that I use 
uh, to kind of relax because it helps me relax. I hope it does to you too. Anyways, so I'm going to square root both sides, but consider the positive square root first, and then we can look at the negative one next. Or you can do it. Whatever. Square root this, and then I'm going to cut down the exponent in half because square rooting basically means raising it to the power one half. That's going to give me i times pi over 4 plus pi k. Everything was divided by 2. Make sense? Great. This is ln x. Is that the end of the story? No, not yet. Because we still have to find x from here. Again, a little bit of simplification. I hope you don't mind. Take k equals 0. Don't worry. I'm going to show you the k equals 1 case as well. The k equals 2 is going to bring you back to the beginning. So now with k equals 0, we get the square root of pi over 2 times e to the power i times pi over 4. So it's a little simpler. Now we're going to go ahead and replace this with what? Square root of pi over square root of two. I could probably just separate these now and write this as cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4. This time I used Euler's formula, but backwards. <laughs> I made it more complicated looking, right? That's, that's fine, because we kind of need to distribute and then use Euler's formula again. I mean, you can do it differently too, but I just want to like it this, this way. And this is going to be root 2 over 2, and this is going to be root 2 over 2. So if you go ahead and distribute that, you're going to get ln x equals, and by the way, you can kind of write this as square root of 2 pi over 2 by rationalizing the denominator, right? So just multiply by square root of 2. And then distribute this root 2 over 2 plus root 2 pi over 2 times root 2 over 2 times i. Don't forget the i, then I will be sad. Okay. Now, what do you get from here? Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. So ln x becomes 2 square root of pi over 4, right? plus 2 square root of pi over 4 times i. And then we can kind of simplify this and write it as ln x equals root pi over 2 plus root pi over 2i. Or we can write this as root pi over root 2. And then inside, we're going to get 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2i. I don't know why I went back and forth with this. It's kind of probably unnecessary, but I wanted to show you something. This is a number whose modulus is 1, so that I can just use Euler's formula again, and I can kind of write this as, how do I write it? e to the power square root of pi over square root of 2, and then I'm going to multiply this by, actually, no, that's, there's probably an easier way to do it. Let's go back and keep it a little simple. So let's see. This, this is probably overcomplicating things. Let's go ahead and pick it up from here. So at this point, I did get the square root of 2. Okay, let me, let me pick it up from here. ln x equals square root of pi over 2. I don't think I'm going to separate them. I don't think that's going to help at this point. And then I'm just going to multiply this by root 2 over 2 plus i times root 2 over 2. Okay? And then at this point, I can go ahead and do x equals e to the power root pi over 2 times root 2 over 2 plus i times root 2 over 2. This is what I was trying to get, but I kind of com confused myself. Okay. Now, this is going to give us the following. We can actually go ahead and distribute and separate these two things. And when I multiply root 2 over root 2 by root 2 over 2, that's going to give me these root 2s are going to cancel out. I'm going to end up with root 2 over 2. Does that make sense? I hope you don't mind me just writing it. So this is going to become e to the power root 2 over 2 plus root 2, root pi, I mean, pi over 2i. And then finally, this can be written as e to the power root pi over 2 times e to the power i times root pi over 2. And then we can go ahead and write it as follows. Trust me, this is going to be the final version. 
and we can kind of use Euler's formula again. Remember, e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. This is going to be e to the power root 2 over 2, I mean the root pi over 2, times cosine root pi over 2 plus i times sine root pi over 2. And here's the thing. If you take k equals 1, you're going to get the following. Allow me to give you this directly. x equals e to the power negative root pi over 2 multiply by cosine of negative root pi over 2 plus i sine negative root pi over 2. It's going to be the pretty much the same thing. You're just going to change the angles, and obviously there are more solutions. But here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to go ahead and check out the first root to see if it satisfies the original equation. What was the original equation and what was the solution we found, right? Well, the solution we found could be expressed as follows because it was e to the power root 2 over root pi over 2 times e to the power root pi over 2i. I could actually write this as follows. e to the power root pi over 2 multiplied by 1 plus i. This is going to make it a lot easier. So that's my x value, the first solution. And now we need to check what this gives us if you plug it into the here. Now this is x. What is ln x? ln x is just going to be the exponent, which is root pi over 2 times 1 plus i. Let's plug it in. e to the power, that's the base, root pi over 2 times 1 plus i to the power ln x, which is root pi over 2 times 1 plus i. Notice that the exponents are multiplied. This gives us e to the power pi over 4, root pi over 2 squared, times 1 plus i squared. But guess what? 1 plus i squared is 2i. You probably knew that, right? And we're going to multiply or replace it with 2i. 2 goes into 4 twice. This gives us e to the power i times pi over 2, which is exactly i. So yes, our expression satisfies or the solution satisfies the equation. This is just one of them. Of course, you can check the other ones as well. But this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and yay. Bye-bye.